So just like specific heat capacity, we have something else called specific latent heat. So the very first thing maybe is to give a definition. So this is uh, the energy per unit mass that is, uh, let's say, absorbed or released during a phase change. So before we had specific heat capacity, which was all about raising the temperature of something by one degree. Well, this time we have a phase change. So something goes from, let's say, solid to liquid or liquid to gas, or sometimes it can even switch. So you can have a situation, for example, if it's really hot, where um, the moisture in the air, for example, can go directly to a liquid as well. So it can go the opposite way like that. So you can have things freezing as well. You can even have things skipping a step. So some things go directly from a solid to a gas if there's not enough pressure, like on Mars, for example. Um, so these things can happen. But if we're looking at specific latent heat, it's the energy per unit mass that's absorbed or released whenever you have a phase change. And we have an equation for it. It goes like this. Q equals ML. This is in your data booklet. So Q is still uh, related to the, well, it's still the heat. So this is going to be measured in joules. M is still the mass, which is measured in kilograms. So L then is the specific latent heat. And if it's, if it's L like this, then it's going to be measured in a joules per kilogram. Because if you got L by itself, you'd have Q over M. So you'd have something like this. So specific heat, latent heat would be joules per kilogram. So that's how this works. But now I think it's important to also look at what we can do with this. So let's take a look at uh, maybe a nice big graph here. I'll try to make it as nice as I can. There we go. A nice huge one there. So let's say this is heat added. So we're going to have a situation where we're going to just keep adding heat or keep adding energy uh, to a system. Now let's think about, uh, well, let's do the simplest thing maybe to imagine, which is with water or uh, ice or a gas, so like steam. So we're going to look at H2O and see it in its different forms and see what happens here. So here, this here would represent the temperature. So the temperature would be in either degrees Kelvin or degrees Celsius. It doesn't matter. So let's take a look then at uh, what happens with H2O. Well, at some uh, value down here, it's at, let's say, something really, really cold up until it reaches. So it's going to go kind of up like this as we add energy. And then eventually it's going to do something like this. So this right here will be at zero degrees. So what happens is this. During this time period right here, we have just ice. So this is when it's negative here. So this is some negative temperature. I don't know what it is, negative something degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Well, it can't be negative Kelvin. In this case, if I've got temperature in Celsius, then this is zero. This is some negative value. So here it's all pure ice. So keep in mind what I do then. I keep adding energy to it. And as I add energy, its temperature can go up. And remember, temperature is all about the average kinetic energy. So that means as I add energy, these things start to sort of wiggle more. So they're moving more. And that means they get hotter. Up until we have a temperature of zero degrees. Uh, then we have something very special happening here. So here we have, maybe I'll write it like this, different here. So here we have, it's melting. So this is a phase change that's happening right here. So this line goes like this. Now what do we have here? Well, we have ice, but we also have water. Because what's happening here is, this is kind of neat, we're still adding energy. So from here to here, we're still adding energy. So then why isn't the temperature going up as we add energy? Well, that's because that energy is being used to break the bonds. In other words, it's, it's being used to convert things from ice to water. So during that phase change, during this time,
that's when we have this going on here, some specific latent heat. We have some energy that in this case is being absorbed, right? Because some of the energy is being sort of given to f changing the phase. So at this point, we have uh, ice and water at uh, zero degrees. Up until then, we have, um, well, then we start to raise the temperature again. So maybe we go up again. So at this point, then, what do we have here? Well, this is just water. So we have just, you know, nothing but water here, no ice left over. So at this point, then, as we go up, well, as we add energy, now we can raise the temperature because all the phase changing is done. Right? It's melted all the ice turned into water. So we've just got water, the temperature goes up until a certain point right here. At 100 degrees, what happens? Well, then the water starts to boil. So when the water is boiling, what's actually happening? Well, that's when we have another phase change happening. So in this case right here, let's say it's boiling water. So that means things are now going from water and they're changing to a gas. In other words, this is going to be steam. So things are changing. So again, we have another phase change, which means as we add more energy, energy is being absorbed into this in order to change its phase, in order to change it from liquid to liquid plus gas. In other words, steam. And of course, what happens after that? Well, then it just goes away and this is just gas here. So after this, the temperature just goes up and actually it doesn't have an upper limit. Um, so it just keeps going up and that's why this is actually very dangerous because steam can be thousands of degrees Celsius. You might have seen that in really bad action movies, you know, where sometimes the bad guy is fighting against the good guy in some sort of uh, machinery. I think this was in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, I saw this, where then of course one guy, he had a, a steam pipe, you know, sort of pointed at him and of course that killed him. Uh, that's just because it was really, really hot. So steam can be very hot. Okay, it just keeps going up because it's just a gas, and that gas can be very, very hot. So the key thing to remember here is whenever you have a phase change, so in this case, either melting or boiling, or you could have it go the opposite direction as well, right? You could lower the temperature and reverse this process. But as long as you're changing the phase, then you have to consider some energy involved. In this case, energy is absorbed in melting and changing the, in breaking the bonds here. And furthermore, more energy here is being absorbed in order to change things from a liquid to a gas. So now what do you do if you get a practical question like, uh, okay, now, well, just like the specific heat capacity example, you know, you pour, let's say you pour some water into a container and then away you go and you could figure out what's the equilibrium uh, temperature. Great. But you can go a step further now. What if you added ice into the water? Well, what would happen is as you heated it up, of course, you'd have some of that energy would be given towards changing the ice from a solid to a liquid. In other words, going from ice to water. So that means if you ever get a question or you're ever uh, encountering a situation where you're having something change phase, you could deal with it just like you did with specific heat capacity, except just add an extra term. Add an extra Q equals ML term whenever you've got some uh, change in phase going on. So that's how you can deal with these things. So Q equals ML, that's specific latent heat.